Okay, guys. So, um, I hope I can get through this. You know, any more, any time I go to make a video, uh, I first pray to the Holy Spirit that he binds these demons so that I can get the video made so that the work can get out here to you guys and that you can come home to Jesus. So, uh, I always make that prayer first. So, what happened? Um... Last night I told you the, the story about what's all been happening here. And um, I said that my life uh, just mimicked the book of Job, everything from the book of Job. So what happened, um, exactly what happened in the book of Job happened to me. Um, there was communion with the Father this morning. And uh, he led me to the, the Gospel of John. And this is what I'm going to share with you guys today. And I want you to understand... As I've said a million times, I had never read the Bible. So, fully understand that when I tell you I'm being led to the Gospels, and where I'm being led to in the Bible, it is Holy Spirit led because I would have nowhere to look in the Bible. I don't know the Bible. Okay? So, we're going to start with John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. And everything that, 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 that I was led to this morning relates to that video I made last night. Okay? So, uh, John uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 21 says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus that night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can anyone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. And this is what I want to clarify for everybody because that demon over there said being baptized means you're being born out of the mother's womb that's the water um, I, I mean just just lies from hell being born of the water means you are being baptized of the water and it's all representative the baptism in the water means you are repenting of your sins and you're making a public sign you are repenting of your sins and you are turning away from your sins that's what the baptism is and all Christians who, who are serious about Jesus being their Lord and Savior, this is a public sign that we all must make. And yes, I have made this public sign. Uh, when I was going to that Baptist church that I loved before I moved up here, um, I was baptized in the water there. And then... And then baptized, and then uh, the water, and then the spirit. You, uh, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and the spirit. And once you once you make that public declaration, you see in, in the Bible when Jesus actually went to John the Baptist and he got baptized in the River Jordan, it said once he got up from the water, the uh, a dove came upon him which was the spirit of God and God's uh, here I go and God said this is my son of who I am well pleased this is what happens the Holy Spirit descends on us when we make this public statement that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins and we're turning away from this, our sins okay that's what that means being born again it's not saying the sinner's prayer and then continuing on with your sinful life it, that's not what it means Flesh gives birth to flesh. This is very important what I'm saying right here. For all of you people that think Christianity is a religion, this what I'm about to tell you right now is very important here because this is not about religion. I've been saying this over and over and over again. Flesh gives birth to flesh, 
but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. This actually supports every teaching of Nisargadatta and Ramana Maharishi. Again, the forms are from the earth. The forms are from the earth. And as Nisargadatta taught, when two forms have sexual intercourse, spontaneously uh, uh, another form is produced because the seed is fertilized from the male and the female. Supports what Nisargadatta says. The other thing is, we are not the form. We are created in God's image. The spirit gives life, not the form. The body is from the earth, and to the earth the body will return. This is why we witness everything that happens in this form. We witness the psychological mind. We witness all of these emotions. The, what I've been sharing with you from this Argadatta and Ramana is, has now been supported in the Bible. And it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with the Christian religion. It has nothing to do with the Hindu religion. It has nothing to do with religion. Religion is in Maya. Religion is from the, the realm of the earth, of the world, of Satan. This has nothing to do with religion. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. That's uh, John chapter 3, verse 6. That's where you'll find that. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with, the, with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asks. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Do you not understand that we are not these forms? There are two different worlds here, two different realms that we are living in, which, which also supports everything I've been sharing with you out here. And that I am in fact living in both worlds at this present moment. So Jesus asked the, the, this, uh, this teacher here of... of uh, of Jewish law do you not understand that there is a spirit world here that God is spirit and th there are all kinds of, of uh, spiritual forces that that are working and that are at play here if you don't understand this then you will never be able to move away from it you see in 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 the, in the world let, let's take people with addiction. Let's take people with an alcohol addiction or a drug addiction, gambling addiction, sex addiction, any kind of addiction you want. If you do not understand that you have a problem, you cannot fix the problem. So if you only believe that what you're seeing in this 3D world is all there is to reality, and you do not understand that there is a spiritual world and it is real, then you don't see a problem and you will never be able to fix the problem or protect yourself from the problem. That is the problem in and of itself. Okay? So, uh, verse 10, You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. Jesus is telling them, he comes from heaven, he, he knows all about the spiritual world, he sits at the right hand of the Father, he knows all about this, and he's here telling everybody about this, and no one will believe him. Why? Because they, they can't see it, they've never experienced it, so therefore they don't believe it's true. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? And this exactly 
relates to what I said in my video last night how all of you people have been abusing me because you've been listening to these demons out here now I, I have been ex teaching you and explaining to you all about narcissistic abuse this is the earthly things this is the the behavior of the form in the world with people who are asleep and if you don't believe me when I explain to you about earthly things how are you ever gonna believe me when I explain to you about spiritual things why because you're still in the sleep and you're still believing the lying demons from hell who themselves are still in the sleep I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe then how will you believe if I speak of heavenly things and I have even shown you videos of people having demons cast out of them and you still don't believe you still believe in the demons no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the son of man just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness notice and this is everything that has been talked about this week this is what the Lord has shown me this morning he's confirming to me why I was put through all this stuff that was my question why did all this have to happen I was looking for God and found Satan why did all this have to happen he's now confirming to me as he did with Job he said to Job there's no way that you can ever understand why I do what I do why would you question me and I, I, I have gotten that same communion with the Father and this is what's being explained here so keep that in the back of your mind this was my question I came to find God and I found Satan why did this have to happen this is what's being answered this morning just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the Son of Man must be lifted up as I explained to you when that demon said that that snake was sent from God it was a lie from hell it was a lie from hell she's just trying to make you believe that Kundalini is from God and it is from Satan it is from Satan it is the dark calling the light darkness this is exactly what's happening to you right before your eyes so when Moses held up that snake in the wilderness it was to show everybody that God is the most powerful and God nothing is more powerful than God look to God for everything for every answer for every need look to God that's what that's what Moses holding up the snake was so just as Moses lifted up the snake in the in the wilderness so the Son of Man must be lifted up in, in, in order for you to ever ever be liberated what you're looking for what are you looking for to get out of the suffering get out of the suffering you've got to understand that you are not this form and that these de demonic thoughts you're having the sin that you're living in the things that drive you in this world that they're not you they're not who you are you are made in God's image and that is the spirit that is the spirit not the form this is why we must break all attachments of this form and the psychological mind this is why we must overcome all desires of this form all the hormones of this form that we are not this form this form is of the earth realm which belongs to Satan in order for you to understand and fully come into who you are in spirit you are created in God's own image which is the spirit in order for you to fully understand that you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because no one gets through the Father except through the Son period that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him 
to save the world, not just save Christians, to save the world. And understand, where was Jesus born? He was born a Jew. He was born in the East. And, and, and all of this, this witchcraft and sorcery and all of this uh, um, and the occult was already going on over there. God knew exactly. He put Jesus right in the middle of Satan's dominion. He put Jesus right in the middle of Satan's dominion to save the Jews. And what did they do? They turned on him and they killed him. And here's the reason why. Because they are idol worshippers. They are idol worshippers. They worship money. They believe that the Christ, and this is why it is prophesied that the Jews are going to believe that the Antichrist is the Christ and they will follow him to their damnation, unfortunately. But they were not looking for a spiritual savior. They were looking for a worldly savior who would help them make more money, bring out a wonderful economy. This is what they're looking for. And this is exactly who the Antichrist will be. He will be of the world. And unfortunately, this is who the Jews are looking for, who they believe the Christ will be because they are idol worshipers. Now you understand. Don't listen to the lies of the demons. Someone who has never read the Bible, how do I know this stuff? How do I know this stuff? There's only one way I know this stuff. And that is through the Holy Spirit. Everything I've ever told you was the truth. Everything. Yet you are choosing to believe the demons out here. It's exactly what Jesus is telling to the Jews in the Bible. And you're doing the same exact thing. This is why I was led to these verses in the Bible. To bring to you. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love the darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Ask yourself what you're doing. Playing with the occult. Playing with tarot cards. Going to see psychics or trying to become a psychic. Or trying to become a medium. What are you doing? It's all about power. That's what you're looking for. Power. You see, when you're really looking for God, it's not about name and fame. And it's not about power. It's about submission. It's about becoming a servant. Not about being well known out in the world and being rich and having people say how wonderful you are. As you can tell, as you can tell with me, how many out there are saying how wonderful I am? No, you're all attacking me. Well, unfortunately, this is what happens to a true servant. This is what happens. This is the verdict, light has come into the world but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. All those who do evil hate the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. This is exactly what Nithyananda is fearful of and this is exactly what that fake one over there is fearful of. This is why she outright blasphemed against the Holy Spirit and called the Bible a liar and she's condemned herself. Sadly, this is what her fear and her hatred of this being that she thinks is called Teresa, her hatred has got the best of her to cause her to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And she has condemned herself. All those who do evil hate the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. 
But those who live by the truth come into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now I'm going to leave that there for that chapter. As you understand, everything I've been led to has, is revealing everything that's happened. Actually, since I changed the name on my page. So now we're going to go to John 6. Verse 63. Here, once again, supporting Nisargadatas and Ramana's teachings. That have nothing to do with religion. That have nothing to do with Hinduism. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. I'm going to read that again. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The flesh is in the realm of Maya, of Satan, of his demons. This is why we must transcend the flesh. We must transcend the form and everything that's attached with the form. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who though one of the twelve was later to betray him. So do you understand? Even Jesus knew that the devil was among him. Anywhere you are in the presence of God, searching for God, you will find these demons all around you. And they will absolutely attack, massively they will attack Christians. And they are absolutely in the church. And I heard that this big thing out here, that Christians do not believe that they can be inhabited, possessed, whatever you want to call it, demonized, whatever you want to call it. Christians do not believe that they can be inhabited by demons. That is exactly what Satan wants them to believe. That is exactly what Satan wants them to believe. And yet, they will never fully know Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Ever. As long as we choose to stay asleep and not see the truth, Satan is one. I said a million times, Satan's biggest accomplishment is to make the whole world believe that he doesn't exist. And he has no fight. He has no fight taking over everything on this earth. He has no fight. Because nobody believes he really exists. Now we're going to go to John 8, verse 18 and on. I am the one who testifies for myself. Other witness, the other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Once more Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go you cannot come. I'm going to read that again. That is so important. One, once more Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go you cannot come. 
This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go you cannot come? Notice how the, the focus is outside of them. The focus is outside of them. They're looking at, will Jesus kill himself? What did Jesus say? You will die in your sin. Not asking, Lord, how will I die in my sin? What do you mean by that? They're looking at Jesus. Is he going to kill himself? This is why they're going to die in their sin. They're in the sleep. But he continued, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Do you understand? This is what I've been saying to you guys for two years now. We have been commanded that we must be in the world, but we should never be of the world. And all these people that you're seeing attacking me are absolutely of the world. And who runs this world? Yep, you got it. <clears throat> I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy, and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about the Father, about his Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases Him. Even as He spoke, many put their faith in Him. To the Jews who had believed Him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. This is John chapter 8, verse 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If if you hold on to my teaching, so let's go John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It is an, an abomination to be playing around in the occult and witchcraft and divination. It is an abomination, and you are opening portals left and right for demons to inhabit your form and your psychological mind and your emotions. Will you hear the truth? They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. A son belongs to it forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Remember that. John chapter 8, verse 36. So, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these demons can't touch you. Doesn't mean like they're, they're all over here. But if Jesus wasn't my Lord and Savior, I would have committed suicide a long time ago. Do you understand? There's all power and authority through Jesus Christ, and there's no other name as powerful as that name. And these demons must bow to that name. And they do. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. Don't want to hear the truth. 
I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You are in the sleep. You are in the sleep. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And that is what that fake one over there does constantly. It's what she does constantly. And that is who her father is. Is the devil she does not know Jesus she does not know the Holy Spirit she most definitely does not know the Father yet because I tell the truth you do not believe me hello can any of you prove me guilty of sin if I am telling the truth why don't you believe me Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking your glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. At this they exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets, yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, I glorify myself. My glory means nothing. If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar, like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself slipping away from the temple grounds. So I want you to fully understand what's happening. This was brought to me this morning, okay? This is why I have gone through what I have gone through. Do I hear the Lord's word? Absolutely. Why are you not hearing the Lord's word? Because Satan has you believing that he is God. And you've got to wake up. You have got to wake up. And this is what Nisargadatta said. When we wake up, we stop believing that Maya is God. I'm going to give you these verses again and I hope that those of you that are starting to understand what I'm saying that you will pick up a Bible and you will read these verses over and over and over again this was I'm choking up this was my communion with the Father this morning answering my question I was seeking God and I found Satan why did this have to happen
there is no more separation from me and the Trinity. There's no more. I know the spirit world is real. I have been through <clears throat> all of the teachings of Nisargadatta, which literally have helped me understand the Bible in a way that I have never understood the Bible before. In a way that I rarely hear Christian preachers teach the Bible. Because most Christian teachers are still in the sleep. This was the reason I was put through all of this. And what's left to say, it is well with my soul. Praise Jesus. And uh, I, can only, I can only pray that you people will start listening, start waking up, and get away from all of these people out here who are binding you to the pits of hell through this occult practice through witchcraft through divination through the lies of the father through telling you that people of the light are of the darkness making you believe that what i'm saying is a lie to you making you believe that everything i'm reading right from the bible is a lie she put out something yesterday saying who's the one really following the light or who's the one really following the darkness if you cannot see her darkness then you are there with her in the darkness. You have to understand that you've got the blinders on and you are in the pits of hell with her. This is why you're not understanding what I'm saying. You've got to wake up. You've got to wake up. And get on your knees and repent of your sins. Say you're sorry. Tell God you don't ever want to do this again and you want to be free of these demons and you want to know him. You want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and ask Jesus Christ into your heart. And anyone, anyone, no matter what you've ever done in your life, you are not your last sin. No matter what you've ever done in your life, if you repent and, and, and truly from your heart go to the Father, and ask for forgiveness and repent and turn of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to come in your life you will be forgiven that is his word that is his word the only sin that will never be forgiven is to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit that is Jesus's words that were given from the Father I want you to understand that Isaiah Saldivar had an interview and I have put this guy on my page to show you the transformation of what happens when you call Jesus Christ into your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior the transformation that happens is unbelievable that his name is John Ramirez he was uh, someone who was extremely high up in satanic worship and he talks about how, how all these Satan worshipers are are working overtime to attack especially Christians but you will see his his transformation actually I will get that video his interview with Isaiah and uh, to show you the truth he he cannot speak loudly enough about Jesus Christ and how you should stop celebrating Halloween what are you doing when you celebrate Halloween that we're such in a sleep we've been lied to by the devil since we were little this is what Nisargadatta explained was the concepts that we must all overcome this is why the truth is an absolute paradox to what we have learned while we were in Maya Maya is Satan's realm this is what we have to wake up from. So I will put uh, John Ramirez's interview with Isaiah in the description so you can see. I, I don't know what his rank was in the satanic uh, worship that he did. Uh, it was extremely high though. It was extremely high. And he, he tells about what he, what he used to do. How he especially used to go after Christians. Why? Because... We, we confess to everybody that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And it is that battle. You've seen the picture I put up on here. 
with the devil here and Jesus here and they're having an arm wrestle. This is exactly what's happening. From the beginning, this is exactly what is happening. It's still happening. This is why demons go after Christians like crazy. So for any Christian to believe that a demon would not inhabit their form, they're falling right into Maya and the realm of Satan. This is what Satan exactly wants them to believe so that they will not arm themselves and prepare themselves. They are lukewarm Christians who believe that they have reached the pinnacle of their, their faith and their religion. They are still in religion, which is their first clue that they haven't woken up yet. They haven't woken up yet. And this is exactly what Satan wants. Especially from Christians. Especially from Christians. Every time Satan gains a Christian, that is a huge notch in his belt, so to speak. He wants Christians. And he wants children. Why does he want children? And let me go right back to Nis Argadatta's teaching because I know the majority of people listening to my videos are from the East and studied the Eastern traditions. And I want to tell you, Nis Argadatta was right on the money and he told everybody, we have to heal our trauma and transcend religion. He told everybody this. He knew. Um, what was I just saying? I forgot. Oh, the children. Nisargadatta said, in the Bible it says, come to God as little children. Most people don't fully understand what that means. So let me explain to you. Most Christians, I will tell you, the Christians that I've heard, they're thinking that little children are... Um, are so innocent and they're they're filled with wonder and they just want to hear what God has to say well, well that's not the truth that's not the truth Nisargadatta told everybody what the truth was he told everybody go back to when you had that child consciousness because what happens we are made in the image of God God is spirit when 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 pure awareness God enters this form spirit enters this form in the womb and before Satan and his demons start inhabiting our form and we know that we're separate from everything and then we we're start we start to uh, get fed the concepts by our family members our community who's all in the sleep who's all been playing in Satan's playground this is what's been happening this is what's been happening why didn't this Argadotta say go back and look at the, the consciousness of a child, of when you were a child? Because you had not bought into the concepts yet. You have no belief one way or another about these concepts. Satan had not gotten into your heart. Satan had not gotten into your heart. As I have said, I have known this all my life. Don't ask me how I've known this. I have known this all my life. And you've heard me say it over and over again. Children are the closest beings to God. Because they have not bought into the concepts yet. They have not even been taught religion. They don't even know what religion is. They don't even know if they're a boy or a girl. They don't know about gender. They don't know about the roles that society demands that they play. They don't know about any of these things. Children are pure awareness. That is what the spirit is. That is what the spirit is. It is pure. This is why we are told to come to God as a child. Go back to that child consciousness. We have got to transcend every single thing of this world. Every single thing of this form, this is what this whole path was about. But understand, that doesn't mean because we're on a path and we're seeking God and we're working at transcending all these things. When we make the, the declaration that this is what we're doing, well, Satan decides that he's going to attack us even more. And I said to you guys this whole time, it seems like Nithya Nanda doesn't want me to get enlightened. And it boggled my mind. It boggled my mind. Here he was talking about he's a guru and he's going to enlighten everybody. And all I kept saying was, it seems like Nithya Nanda does not want me to be enlightened. 
And sure enough, he didn't. He didn't. He is a pure demon. Nityananda is a pure demon. And he constantly talked about his mission here. He knows what his mission is. And everyone working for him knows what his mission is. The same mission that that demon who spoke to Bob out of that woman's mouth was crying, Bob, stop it. We have work to do. You're interfering with our work. This is what Nityananda's mission is. And it's a head count. It's to pull people away from God. Especially Christians. And especially children. Why? As I said, children are the closest beings to God. And when we transcend all of the uh, attachments and the desires of the form, we become that consciousness. We become that awareness. Do you understand? And it doesn't mean that the demons leave us alone at that point. Not as long as we're in this form. This is why it's absolutely dangerous for any Christian out here to believe that they, they, they can't be attacked by demons because they're a Christian. You're believing the lie of Satan and you're still in the sleep. I hate to tell you that. You're st and I don't hate to tell you that. I'm happy to tell you that. You're still in the sleep. And that's exactly what Satan wants. So I'm going to leave this here. Um, a lot of information in here, you guys. But uh, the Lord has shown me why I had to go through it. That was my question. I went searching for God and I found Satan. Why did any of this have to happen? Well, now I understand why. And uh, it is well with my soul. That's all I can say. So the the chapters and, and verses, is it, it's the book of John. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. Chapter 6. I started at verse 63 and then read down from that part. And then chapter 8, verses 18 until the end. And this is where I was led by the Father this morning. Okay? Um, I'm going to anoint you again with some oil. Any of you that are on the fence right now, do you know whose is the fence? The fence is Satan's. Okay? Anything that keeps you in confusion, uncertainty, um, cognitive dissonance, it's Satan's. That's Satan's realm, Satan's world. So if you're feeling on the fence, understand Satan still has a grip on you. Okay? Let go. Let go and freely call out to the Father. God is not going to intrude in your life. you got to go to Him freely. Get on your knees or wherever, wherever. Find a place that is solely going to be your prayer space. And you've got to just let go. You've got to just let go and repent and ask Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Savior and to save you. And He will. Okay, so I'm going to anoint you with some holy oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May your minds be settled. May your heart be settled. May you reach out in peace and ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior and to finally be free of these demons. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. You guys be blessed. Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, for some of you, New Year's is going to be a lot better. For some of you, you're going to start going through growing pains on the path, which uh, it may be a little uncomfortable, but uh, it's the biggest blessing you will ever receive as you break away the chains and bondage of Satan. And uh, I pray that that is what is in your future. You'll be blessed.